Father, as I look out to the church, Lord, I think of you when you were in the garden praying. And you were praying and everyone fell asleep. And you said, why can't you pray just one hour with me? Lord, I pray you draw your people back to the church. Oh, Father, help us. Oh, let us not be lured by the enemy. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus. I'm sorry. So the name of my title is Remember Your First Love. Stay in the word. <laughs> Stay close to God. And the uh, book that I'm going to begin in is Deuteronomy. And it starts in chapter 31. And um, it's verse 14. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your word. It's alive and powerful. Thank you, Lord. So it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, the days approach when you must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of meeting that I may inaugurate him. So Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of meeting. Now the Lord appeared at the tabernacle in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud stood above the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, you will rest with your fathers, and this people will rise and play the harlot with the gods of the foreigners of the land, where they go to be among them, and they will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger will be aroused against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Have not these evils come upon us, because our God is not amongst us? And I will surely hide my face in that day, because of all the evil which they have done, and that they have turned to other gods. Now therefore, write down this song for yourselves, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel when I have brought them to the land flowing with milk and honey, which I have swore to their fathers, they have eaten and filled themselves and grown fat. Then they will turn to other gods and serve them, and they will provoke me and break my covenant. Then it shall be, when many evils and troubles have come upon them, that this song will testify against them as a witness, for it will be not be forgotten in the mouths of their descendants. For I know the inclination of their behavior today, even before I have brought them to the land of which I swore to give them. Therefore Moses wrote this song the same day and taught it to the children of Israel. Then he inaugur inaugurated Joshua the son of Nun and said, Be strong and of good courage, for you shall bring the children of Israel into the land of which I swore to them, and I will be with you. So it was when Moses had completed writing the words of this law in a book, when they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there as a witness against you. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. If today, while I am yet alive with you, you have been rebellious against the Lord, then how much more after my death? Gather to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these things these words in their hearing, and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death you will become utterly corrupt and turn aside from the way at which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Then Moses spoke in the hearing of all the assembly of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. And this is where um, my study begins. So first, Moses sang to God, he praised him, and he, and he called an alertness to the people. He says in uh, Deuteronomy 32.1, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. 
Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. <clears throat> we are to acknowledge God in all of our ways. Without him, we wouldn't have our being. We wouldn't even be existing. All right, and then... If you go to Isaiah chapter 1, please. <clears throat> Actually, go to uh, verse 2 of chapter 1. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ark... The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not consider. consider. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. <clears throat> Why should we, you be stricken again? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faints. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed or bound up or soothed with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Strangers devour your land in your presence. And when I read that, I thought of today and what's going on in this world. There's fires burning awful... It's awful. It's just fires destroying land. There's foreigners trying to break in with lawlessness. They have no rules, no uh, the desire to serve God or follow, you know, commands. Or they're just reckless. And uh, even though we see this in the Old Testament, we can take God's word and compare it to the times in our life right now. Uh, verse 7, uh, Isaiah 1, 7. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers, so the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Unless the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been made like Gomorrah, which is what's happening today. If you know the word, you will be able to, to understand this. That's why my study is, is about staying in the word. If you don't know the word, you're not going to be able to walk with God. <clears throat> we tend to forget, fail, and fall if we don't know the word of God. Um, all right, so in, uh, back in Deuteronomy... Chapter 32, verse 5. They have corrupted themselves. They are not his children. Because of their blemish, a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus deal with the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father who bought you? Has he not made you and established you? Now, when I read that, you can take God's word and match it up to something else in God's word. It always backs backs it up. So if you were to go to Genesis chapter 3, 1. Actually, go to, um, first go to Genesis 2, 16. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now if you take that and compare it to the things of this world, we can take the knowledge, we can t we eat, freely eat of God's word. But if we take the knowledge of the way of this world, we will die. Um, and if you notice, you know, if you think about it, Eve walked with God in the garden. Every day God showed up with them. They, they spent time together. And the devil is very deceptive. 
So you, ha- you have to have discernment in the word in order to, to be quick and to, to be able to, to have an answer or to, to be able to turn from temptation. You have to know the word. So it's, def- it's, it's definitely important. Um, it says in chapter 3 of Genesis, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now notice here she actually added to the word. She she actually added to what God said, because he only said, don't eat it. Um, and also, you know, if we, if we think about it, we can take God's word and switch it around. There's, it's all over. You can see it anywhere where um, people are, are saying that homosexuality is okay when it's not. They're trying to take the word and, and switch it, just as it did right in the very beginning. Um, sorry. Um, just so you know, I, I put here, the devil uses people too, um, just as he used Eve and Adam. We need to recognize that there's people in our own lives that the devil can use because they might not know the word. And they may be walking, they may go to church with you. Um, you... The important thing is, though, is that we have to examine the word, examine ourselves, and be humble as well, because none of us are perfect. So when somebody makes a mistake, kindly correct them. Um, Be quick to correct them. Uh, Be careful of how you answer back. Um, And even if you have to stay quiet for a little bit, just to talk to God or to review the word, just to make sure you're right. It's, it's so important because that one seed can be a huge mistake if you're wrong, if it's corrupted. All right. Uh, and uh, the other things I wanted to speak about was discernment of knowing the word, to be mindful and alert, and to be disciplined. And um, this book that I have here, I, I highly recommend it. Pastor had recommended it, and I think Jen has it as well. It's called Biblical Foundations of Freedom by Art Matthias, and it teaches a lot about God's Word and um, helps to, to help you to understand it better. And um, here, here I put a, we have to be careful of pride, unbelief, and not and to be careful of how we're walking. Are we walking in the flesh or are we walking in the spirit? You're either walking in, in the Word of God or you're walking in your Word or the world's way. Um, Satan is a master deceiver seeking to counterfeit the Godhead. First, he wants to counterfeit the Father's will for mankind. He tries to lure us into thinking and seeing life in a way that is different than God's way. Jesus labeled him a liar and the father of lies. That's in John 8, 44. Secondly, Satan wants to counterfeit God's word, so he entices us with another gospel. Remember that Satan knows scripture quite well. He began corrupting it from the beginning. As he spoke to Eve in the Garden of Eden, he made subtle changes in the commandments God gave to Adam and Eve. He did this to influence Eve to adopt his way of thinking. He tried tricking Christ by misquoting scripture while tempting him in the wilderness. Now, if Satan is that stupid to try to trick Christ, <laughs> it just it's just goes to show you how you have to be so cautious of how he how he is. He's just it's awful. Um, when uh, when the important thing that I always remember, even many years ago, when I was reading the Word, was <laughs> Christ. When when the Lord was in the the wilderness and he was being tempted by Satan. We all know what he used as, as a, a weapon against what the enemy was tempting him, and it was the word. The word is what keeps us from temptation. The word is what puts, push, pushes back the enemy. Uh, Jesus is the living word. Satan wants to teach men a gospel different from God's gospel. 
Satan's gospel is described as having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. This also describes divination and occultism. It's a way of thing, thinking that twists the truth, often using scripture to establish some credibility. And that's exactly what Satan does. He wants to, to counterfeit everything that God has done. Everything I'm saying is nothing new. Pastor, <laughs> Pastor's already said all of this, and it's, it's, it doesn't change. God's word does not change. But we need to keep reading it and getting it on a, in us because our flesh is weak. Um, all right. Oh, go to uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, please. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls, ar prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Uh, next, go to 2 Corinthians 10.5. Two Corinthians ten five. We destroy arguments and every can you go to King James Version? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, uh, sometimes people, when they read that, it's hard to comprehend what God's trying to say, and really, it's hard. You, have to, you have to take it into a spiritual way of thinking, and God will help you understand that. So if you're having some thought in your mind, take a hold of it, give it to God, and you, when you take it into the Word, See if it's there. If it's not there, or if it's backwards or not matching up, it's not of God. And then give it to the Lord and crucify it. So that's basically what that's saying. All right. Um, let's see. Next. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Can you put Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24, please? Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Thank you. Um, okay, so then now go to Galatians 2.20, please. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And after I read that, I, I wrote this down because I was thinking about it. And um, we live in the world, and we tend to be emotional. We tend to, our minds go all over the place. And I wrote this down. It says, don't let your emotions take a hold of you. The work is finished at the cross. But we must believe it, believe the word, and walk in obedience. Jesus died on the cross. We must be imitators of Christ. We don't die on the cross literally, unless the Lord you know, wants us to. But our flesh desires, the, fle the flesh, the, the angry thoughts, the, the, uh, horrible, you know, the things that we do that we shouldn't do. They must die so that we can be born again, new in life in Christ and receive his spirit and walk in obedience with his word, which is spirit. Okay. I'm going to 
this bit. Remember what the Lord says. All right, and then now we're going to go back to Deuteronomy um, 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you, your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the people. God gives us boundaries. According to the number of the children of Israel, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. We can do nothing without Christ. He is the anointed one. Now, when I read this right here, if you can take this word and apply it to your own life, it says, he found him in a desert land. We were all at one time astray. We were all lost in a desert land, in a wasteland, a howling wilderness. He, God, encircled him. God instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. The one thing that I, I actually have this on my Facebook thing, and it really, it was something I was praying about, and God was, you know, we were, I was spending time with the Lord, and I, I just thought of this, and I wrote it down. It says, one thing I do know, the one person that has been there in my life when it was the darkest was the Lord. I cried to him for help. He heard me as he heard the Israelite slaves. Anyone else that was there to help along the way was a person that spoke God's wisdom and correction into my life. They were a spirit-led person. The word will help you see things clearly when you go to work or when you raise your children, you will begin to have understanding of why things are the way they are. Disobedience leads to destruction. Okay. Um, Ephesians chapter 4. Walk in the, um, I'm not reading the scripture yet. Walk in the word, walk in the spirit, obey the scriptures, God's word, and you will walk in the spirit. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all in cleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man who grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man who was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who steal, stole steal no longer but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. 
There was something that came to my mind when I was seeking God, and I, I really enjoyed doing this because God just helps me to learn more and to walk better with him. And, and um, there was a scripture that I had read where um, I think it was Peter had said to Jesus, and he was asking about another disciple, and he said, well, what about him? And I, and I think it was John. And Jesus said, don't worry about him. Follow me. <laughs> So I just, when, when, we, when we get ourselves into the word, we don't, we don't have any bitterness anymore. We don't have any need to compare ourselves to another. We're just comparing ourselves to the Father. And with that, God gives us peace. He gives us correction. And, and we know that he loves us. He died for us. He died for every single person, how, no matter how great or big or small the sin was. He, he died for those people that spoke awful of him. And he, and he, he just wants us to, to be seeking forgiveness, to seek to walk in his ways. He's just a loving God. And if we would just spend time more in his word, we wouldn't have as many problems or horrible thoughts or evil ways of thinking. We would just be walking in his ways and we'd be used by him to bring other people to him and get to know him better. All right, and then now um, Ephesians 5. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be even named among you as it is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. <laughs> God's word is life. Every other word falls to the ground. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. I'm going to read that, even though it wasn't on here. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, who, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Amen. All right, so I'm almost done. <laughs> so we're going to go to Psalm 19. Most important is to praise God. Don't forget what he's done for you. And I, I know I was all over the place, but everything goes together. Um, the song that Moses wrote was to the people because God knew they were going to fall away. He's, he, there was, it's, it's so sad. And, you know, God knew that, and Moses wrote all this down for us to read later on, <laughs> years and years later. And it's over and over again. It shows how our flesh is corrupt, and we need the Spirit of God and his word in our life to keep us close to him. So with Deuteronomy and me, te and me speaking about it, um, I really, I d to apply it to your life of acknowledging God, of recognizing who he is and how great he is, uh, to be cautious, to examine yourself, to see, are you corrupt or are you walking with the Lord? Are you making unwise, foolish decisions and, and going the way of the world or are you making the decisions that God would have in his word? Um, to, to, and to, to stop and think, God, look at what you've done for me. Lord, forgive me for forsaking you or forgive me for doubting you when you've been faithful so many times. So with that, that's why I chose Deuteronomy. And to, if, if you come back to your first love and you're, you're struggling, go into the word and just get on your knees and, and cry out to God and recognize him as Lord and repent, and, and get into his word. 
uh, Psalm 119, is um, the reason why I wanted to put in Psalm 119 is because it's, it's one of the psalms that helps you to examine yourself. So it's like a prayer. It's a pray. Let's see, what did I write? I wrote something down. Hold on. Well, I wrote this. Know this scripture. Pray this, the scripture to the Lord. Just as this person was talking to God and asking God to help him, to seek him more, do the same for yourself. It says, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The word is the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. It's not blessings of money. It's it. In God is faithful. He's he 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 can do that too. But the most ble- most blessed thing you can have is is salvation, walking with God. How it, it says in Psalm one nineteen nine. How can a young man cleanse his way? So, right here, the word has it for you of what to do of, of how to seek God and. And, what, and it's just right here. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart, I have sought you. And what does Jesus say? To love me with all your heart and to obey my commandments. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let not me wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And it says, open my eyes. He asks, open my eyes, Lord, that I may see wondrous things from your law. You can pray and you can ask God. If you don't understand something in the word, God can show it to you. He can help you understand. But your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are also my delight and my counselors. Psalm 119.25 says, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. If you feel like you're dying or you feel like you're helpless or hopeless, God's word can bring life to you. Just, just as we need water, naturally we need God's living water. I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, so shall I meditate on your wonderful works. You know, this person was honest with God. In, in Psalm 119, he said, my soul melts with heaviness. You know how many people are heavy? They're, they're depressed. They're killing themselves. They're taking drugs. They're saying they don't know why they're depressed. Because they don't have God in their life, they're not, they're not seeking the, the giver of life. I have chosen, this person says, I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. It's a chosen action. We have to choose whether to obey God in good or obey the devil and evil and the things of this world, which is very obvious. There's a lot of evil out there. So if you have a hard time with unbelief, ask God to open your eyes because you'll see it. Psalm 119.33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive in me your way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. Turn away my reproach which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive in me your righteousness." Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. And I take not the word of truth utterly, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in your ordinances, so shall I keep your law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, in freedom. (laughs) When we come up here and we sing, about liberty we will be truly free god has made a way that jesus has set us free and when we truly walk in his word and we're free from sin we're no longer a slave and bound to to 
whatever falsehood we're living, we will be jumping in joy when we're free from those things because they weigh you down. So, uh, <clears throat> in Psalm 119, uh, 57, you are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. 59, I thought about my ways, and I turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgetten, forgotten your law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Um, the scripture that I just read, I, I know myself for sure, I was in a mess when I cried out to God. And he is mercy and his love for me, even when I wasn't even faithful to him and I didn't hardly even know him. His word right here is so true in my life and so many other scriptures in this book. God has been faithful. Psalm 119, 73. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort according to your word to your servant. I could go on and on. <laughs> Psalm 119, I highly recommend. <laughs> if you're struggling and you need to know how to pray to God, read Psalm 119. Um, the, last, the last one I want to speak about is Psalm 145, because the most important thing you can ever do is to praise God and acknowledge him for who he is. One second. <clears throat> All right. Um, Psalm 145, I just want to read what the little the thing says in here. It says, A time will come when all people will join together in recognizing and worshiping God. Because God is full of love, he satisfies all who trust in him. Psalm 145, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness, and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power, to make known the sons of men his mighty acts in the glorious majesty of his kingdom 
Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who have bowed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him, who also will, will hear their cry. he will also hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. When I, if you can take this, this scripture and, and apply it to your life, or even take it and, and see how wonderful the Lord is, you could think of the time where the prostitute came and put anointed Jesus' feet and how loving and kind he was, even though he knew what she, what she had done. He just, he allowed her to do that. He seen that she wanted forgiveness. She wanted to, to love the Lord. Um, how about the other lady that was caught in adultery and everybody was wanting to kill her and, and, and hurt her, but the Lord, <laughs> he's so wonderful and forgiving. He just, he said, if any of you have, have no sin, go ahead, be the first to throw a stone. But if, if, uh, if you see at the end of the verse, he, he told the woman, sin no more. And follow, follow me. Follow him. You can only follow Jesus if you follow his word. Okay, I think that's it. I just want to make sure I did everything I was supposed to do. The, I'm closing now. Um... I, my final thing is seek the Lord, seek his word, humble yourself and obey. Have faith in a God beyond our comprehension. Draw close and pray. Be still and listen. Fear him with a holy fear. Amen. Um, I have a song. I don't know if anyone wants to come to the altar and pray for people that have fallen away from the word or pray for themselves, but I just want to, I want to go to the altar and pray um, and, and worship the Lord. I can't hear you. Oh, good. Have a good night. God bless you. Stay in the word. <laughs>